Hi everybody, I just wanted to speak a little bit about trauma, trauma and self-healing. So my business, um, Embodied Stillness, is all about really using the nervous system as a means, as a way of tracking your state and thereby starting to realize really where are what I call the roots of your dysfunctional self, but let's just call it trauma. It's a nice, easy way to describe it, where that really lies and also how to access that and release that. So when I was uh, a young Qigong student with my teacher, he talked a lot about um, cutting the weeds. And cutting the weeds is working with the uh, symptoms or the effects of stress and trauma on the body, the mind, the energy system, the emotional state. So that means when you get stressed, when you get anxious, when you feel overwhelmed, you can go and do some breathing practices, or in my case, you can do some Qigong and vibrate that charge out of your body. You'd feel better. The result was you'd feel better, but it would come back. And the same triggers would trigger that stuff. So let's say for argument's sake, uh, your trigger was relationships. And yes, you could be then in a, uh, an argumentative situation or uh, you call drama in again and again into your relationships. And you could then, after an explosion or even during, you could regulate your nervous system using your breath, understanding where it is in your body. And we're going to talk about that in a second, how to do that. Afterwards, that would then subside. You'd be able to be more present to what was happening, but it would happen again. And it would happen again and happen again. So I became a bit more interested in root cause stuff and trauma. And I work with a lot of trauma and one-to-one -one situations as a therapist. Um, I'm also, I also run uh, a course directly for looking at that called um, the polytherapists uh, meeting yourself with compassion but generally in my business uh, that's what I'm working with and looking at different ways to not only cut the weeds not only to treat the symptoms but looking at really the root cause of, of that stuff and for a lot of you maybe you don't realize that trauma what some people call small t trauma is something as opposed that is to capital T trauma. Capital T trauma is the, the, the sort of thing we're all familiar with, with accidents, death, uh, um, sexual abuse, et cetera. Those are the big things that we can understand creates PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, so what maybe some of you aren't so familiar with is, is that we're all actually traumatized. <laughs> So trauma, trauma in this case, I'm talking about developmental trauma. So it's at a point in your life when your nervous system was uh, brought into a state where it was in overwhelm and you no longer felt safe or in control. And that causes, um, in my practice, I, kind of talk, I, I talk about sort of snapshots, calcified snapshots, a moment in time which stays in your system, which plays out. And then we get what's called triggers, which in your life, something reminds you or, or brings you back momentarily into that space that time where that particular trauma happened, that moment where your nervous system was overwhelmed and you get triggered, that you, you feel your nervous system can't differentiate between now and then and the same emotions come up. Now, those same emotions could be emotions from a six-year-old child in a situation in your 40s and 50s where inappropriate behavior then uh, arises and, um, yeah, and sometimes causing damage to your loved ones or to yourself or to a situation. So it's a good idea to start looking at that. And I always talk about that really as growing up, um, starting to really learn how to respond to stuff that comes up and rather than react and learning how to then work with that. So I'm gonna just talk you through a really simple process. I do this with a lot of my clients. Um, it's a nice way to kind of begin to get a handle on uh, learning how to respond when stuff comes up, how to deal with it really practically. So, Every situation is a little bit different, but the, the journey into the root is quite similar always. And it, we have, let's say, between three and five steps, um, depending on the details you want to go into. So at the beginning is very simple. You first need to recognize that something has come up. And when I say something has come up, I mean that you're being triggered by a situation. So that can arise in the form of anxiety, in um, a sense of stress or overwhelm, um, it can go as far as depression or just being angry, reactive in that situation, wanting to lash out. So nervous system, remember your nervous system is uh, a system in your body. There are, for simplicity's sake, let's say there are two sides. One side is to make you fight or run away. One side 
it's there to relax you and settle you down. Now, it can get a bit more complicated than that. I'll do a whole video on polyvagal theory, which is bringing a third aspect into that. But for, for simplicity's sake, let's just say you've got two, fight or flight, rest and digest. And this is, um, it's like a radar system. It's basically constantly scanning your environment and adjusting your, your internal environment for you to best meet whatever's coming your way. Um, the only issue with the nervous system, it's like an outdated um, operating system of a computer that hasn't got an update since you were seven. So it gets formed in those early years and you're then playing out a lot of your life through the lens of an outdated uh, operating system, which causes, as you can imagine, issues when you're an adult in a situation and your nervous system is getting triggered as if you were a seven-year-old, problems can uh, arise. And that's what we see in our daily life. We react much more strongly when the situation actually um, demands and necessitates. And um, yeah, mayhem can ensue, or just an argument or whatever that is, right? Now, those triggers can, or rather the, the symptoms of, of trauma can come up in, in the morning, you just feel anxious, right? Cortisol comes up into your body in the morning to get you up, to get you moving. And that just can, uh, on a sensitive system, can cause stress and overwhelm as well. Or you have an exam coming up, stuff coming up in the future that um, you may be worried about and having thoughts about. And that in itself causes uh, a, a situation and anxiety in your body. Your nervous system sees that as a threat, potential, um, sometimes even life-threatening situation and, and creates an environment in your body, which is making you ready or creating a situation where you're ready to run or, or fight or collapse, and that's that third stage. Good, so what do we do? So the first thing to do is to become aware of how you're feeling, what we call bringing explicit awareness to your state. Your state is what you're feeling at that moment. So you can be happy, sad, angry, depressed, annoyed, even hungry, right? So you bring your explicit awareness, awareness to that. So you, let's say for argument's sake, you close your eyes, you have the space to do that. And often this arises in situations when you're not able to do that. So um, it takes practice, it takes practice. But the first step is noticing, oh, something's going on. And then you bring explicit awareness to that. So you say, for example, I am tired. I am annoyed. So I am annoyed. You've just created a bit of distance between you and what you're feeling. So let's take annoyance today. So I am annoyed. You've managed to create distance and that enables you a little bit more to have uh, a bit more perspective on that. Okay, I'm annoyed. And then you ask yourself, uh, where is it in my body? So what you're doing here is you're bringing your explicit awareness into the physical. Now, physical is the way to ground it in the present moment. So you're no longer being triggered by the past, worrying about the future. You're there in the present moment in your body. It's a really useful technique just to become present. I'm sure many of you heard of this thing about being grounded. Well, grounded and presence go hand in hand, essentially the same thing, right? So where is it in your body? Where am I annoyed in this case, is that an example? So let's say for argument's sake, it's in my chest. Oh, I can feel that burning up. Oh yeah, annoyance. So I can feel that. And then you see if you can stay present. So the first one is explicit awareness to your state. I am annoyed. Second, where is it in my body? And then third is, can I stay present to that without creating a story, without my mind going off and saying, oh, that reminds me, whenever that happened, or they shouldn't do that to me, and I'm all, or I'm always go wrong, or I'm not good enough, and all the kind of stories that can be created through uh, a nervous system that's dysregulated, right? So you sit with that sensation. Can you stay present with it? Step three. If you can, you just notice what's happening. Is it moving? Temperature, is there any heat in there? What happens when you just stay present? And then here you have a choice. So four and five, you have a choice. You can either ask it, it depends how in touch you are with your body. You can say to that area, oh, what do I need to know? What are you trying to tell me? So your body's always trying to communicate something, some level of not feeling safe, right? Some people struggle with that. So you, if, if you don't get an answer or that just makes you start thinking, you just go straight to the final step. And this is the most important. This is bringing love or compassion into whatever's going on. So you can call it turning towards yourself or call it um, drenching in love, whatever poetic way or just nice normal way you have of describing that. Essentially, you're feeling the sensation and then dropping words in of love. 
So I always get my clients to choose their own words of love. It's always nice to have words that you would have liked to have heard more often as a child. Or you just say, I love you. Uh, and culturally, for myself, living in the UK, that has a resonance. Um, you don't need to feel, oh, I'm loving myself. You just drop those words in. So I use, I love you. It's simple. I don't need to think about it. And I literally drop like pebbles into a pond. I drop those words into my um, sensation in that area. Let's say the heart, right? It's where we were working with noise. So I love you. I love you. I love you. And you just keep on dropping in there, staying present. If you find your mind wandering off, bring it back. And those words are like, they're weighted. They kind of start going through the first layer of that sensation. Remember, that's what you're staying present in, right? You're dropping the words, I love you, or I cherish you, or I honor you, or I adore you, whatever your words of love are, into that stress, right? That charge in your, in your physical body, the nervous system, you've got plexi in these areas, they get very agitated, right? So that's where we hold the result of overwhelm. So we're going straight into the nervous system and essentially hacking into that with these words. I love you. And then you watch what happens. I love you. I love you. And with that combination of words, awareness on the sensation, and presence, and you're already noticing what's happening, things start to shift. And that's it, in essence. That's the essence of part one of really working deeply with the symptoms. Then you go into the inner child work. And I'll do a little video about that. And you can uh, follow that. But practice those first steps first. So let's recap really simply, right? You bring explicit awareness to your situation. So what, what are you feeling? What am I feeling? I'm feeling annoyance, okay? So you've done it, step one. Sometimes it's not so simple. Sometimes there might be a mix. Oh, I'm kind of a bit agitated. Doesn't really matter. Okay, I am agitated. You start with whatever happens, that might shift. So let's say agitation. I'm agitating. Oh, um, where am I feeling in my body? Oh, just noticing it. Can I feel that? Oh, hmm, not so easy, right? Maybe in your case, right? So then just, it's kind of like, let's say solar plexus, but kind of belly, pick, pick one. Okay, let's say solar plexus. That's just here below your breastbone. Okay, so you sit with it. Can I stay, step three, can I stay present to that without going off in my mind and creating stories about it? I shouldn't be, I should be, et cetera, et cetera, right? Judgmental stories. If you can't stay present and you get lost in those stories and you can't bring your mind back, that's when you need to move a little bit, do a breath, do a bit of brave breathing. Let's say uh, uh, box breathing or triangle breathing. And I've got some more videos for that if you're interested. If you can stay present, you do. And then you start drenching it with love, just dropping those pebbles in. I love you. I love you. I adore you, whatever it is. I often sort of start with, oh, I love you, tightness in my chest, let's say, or solar plexus. I kind of give it a description. I love you. I love you. I love you. Like a mantra, you just keep on repeating it, repeating it, and see what happens. You might be surprised. All right, let me know if you have any questions. This is the beginning of a self-healing journey super powerful very simple not always easy to catch those feelings and identify where they are okay so yeah let me know how you go